Ava coders, today I want to talk about the Python Zen or PEP20, which was created by Tim Peters in 2004 and it serves to inspire and guide Python coders to write beautiful code, ensuring code readability, which promotes code reusability. Not many people know, but you don't actually need to go online to read this guide. If you're using Jupyter like myself, you can actually open a blank document and type something like import this. And as you can see, this is the Python Zen. Now I'm going to briefly explain you what each line means and you can check out the example code in the Avacodis GitHub repository. Number one, beautiful is better than ugly. Beautiful code is achieved through a combination of explicit, simple, sparse and flat attributes to help ensure a high level of readability. On the other hand, ugly code is hard to read, thus hindering the potential for code we use. The next one, explicit is better than implicit. Explicit, an attribute of beautiful code, offers a thorough detailed illustration or explanation of what your program is doing, therefore making it more readable and easier to understand. Simple is better than complex. Simple is another attribute of beautiful code which provides clarity through uncluttered straightforward code which is easier to understand than complex code and therefore it helps to be more readable. Complex is better than complicated, or sometimes referred to as complex is prettier than complicated code, but it's still not as desirable as simple. Some situations, however, may call for a complex solution, for example, to maintain sparseness if a simple approach cannot be found. So bear that in mind when writing your code. Check out this database example to see what I mean. Flat is better than nested. Of course, this choice of flat over nested depends on the situation. So with the occasion we are opting for flat means better readability and more efficiency and time in our memory, then this endpoint encourages you to opt for flat over nested. Sparse is better than dense. Sparse is the last attribute of beautiful code covered in PEP20, which encourages you using less line of code, since less, for example, less clutter can help to achieve more readability. You can check out this code example where we pass an HTTP response object yielding back new requests or data. And I bet that the second option is much more pleasing to your eye rather than the first one. Besides, when someone just starts off writing code in Python, he or she normally writes code as it is written um, in the first option, because a beginner coder doesn't need to explain the code to anyone. Thus, the dense written function code can be met quite often among the junior developers. Let's move on. Readability counts. Writing a beautiful code by using a combination of the attributes I mentioned helps to ensure readable and maintainable code. As Guido and Rossum, creator of Python, put it, if code is not readable, it cannot be reusable. Special cases aren't special enough to break the rules, although practicality beats purity. So as an example, we are given the code where we test to write a function that returns another function. And also we need to test the floating point. So here, instead of the counter function, we are using the adder function with Lambda. And as you can spot, one of the assert functions um, breaks the rule so it's not special enough to break the rule of floating point and we can actually do it differently. Next one is errors should never pass silently unless explicitly silenced. So Python has exceptionally easy ways of handling errors and fixing them on the fly. So we must use them. So here you can see as an example, we have to import the JSON library. And in case we can't do it, we need to raise an exception. 
The next one, in the face of ambiguity, refuse the temptation to guess. This is a short and easy rule to follow, meaning that you should look up how to do something rather than guessing how to do it. The next one is there should be one and preferably only one way to do it, although that way may not be obvious at first unless you're Dutch. So the first one is easy, you just pick the best option to do things. And the second one is a sort of a joke. It refers to the Guido van Rossum, who is Dutch. May not be obvious at first, means that you can always find a way to do something, but the first thing you think of probably won't be the most efficient. Now is better than never, and although never is often better than right now, means that when presented with a problem, don't spend too much time figuring out the perfect way to solve it. Code something that works, then refactor that code. For example, write a test and write the code that passes that test and then improve that code. Although you have to be careful because it is important to give some thought into the problem before you start to solve it. Make sure that the code you're writing is actually working. And this is the approach used in something called Test Driven Development, or TDD. But we'll move on to the next one. If the implementation is hard to explain, it is a bad idea. And equally, if the implementation is easy to explain, it may be a good idea. The basic principle is, if it's hard to explain, then it's too complex and complicated and therefore hard to read and understand. Thing is, if you finally figure out the and understand the implementation, the likelihood you'll remember in the future is low. But if you have an implementation that is easy to explain, it may be a good idea. However, just because it's easy to explain doesn't mean it's the best solution. So make sure it is the best solution before you go and implement it as your permanent solution. And so we approach the very last statement. Namespaces are one honking great idea. Let's do more of those. This last statement encourages us to optimize the use of namespaces in our Python code. So namespaces are typically employed for the purpose of grouping symbols and identifiers around a particular functionality. This helps to create a higher level of organization while promoting readability and the potential for reusability. And that's about it. Thank you very much. That was V. Please give this video Empress thumbs up, toll the bell and subscribe and write a beautiful code. See you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.